The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Morning, folks. Welcome to the May 23rd, otherwise known as the Terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day, and let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstances that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to check out the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in 877-927-6648. Now, if you can't dial in, but you've got a question, we've got your back. You can send me an email, send that off early, and send it to steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We're starting our day with a mixed bag out there. You've got the uh, Dow off but 259 points. The S&P's up 4. NASDAQ's up 82. Russell's off 14. Semis are up 36. Trendy's down 158. We've got gold off 47 bucks. She's trading out at 23.45. Silver's down a buck, trading out at 30.49. Lights recruit off 54 cents. 79.26 is the print there. Natural gas off a nickel, 30 year treasury down about uh, 25 ticks, print out at 116.16. Our leader in the clubhouse, no surprise here, dollar wise, it's Nvidia up 94 bucks. 1,043 is what it's trading at. ELF Beauty having a great day, 20% move the upside. That's a $30 move. Asimil Holdings up 27 bucks or 3%. Synopsis up. 15 bucks, nearly 3%. Enersys up 10 bucks. That's a 10% move. Our uh, shakers to the downside, led by MicroStrategy, off 51 bucks, 3%. Solo Win Holdings down 26 bucks or 67%. Holy shnikes there. Arista Networks down 22, 7%. Lincoln Electric Holdings off 22, 10%. Parker Hannafin about $14, a 2.5% move there. So we got movers and we've got shakers. But let's begin the day by doing what? Let's go take a look at those daily equity future contracts. To do that, we're going to change screens. We're going to go take a look at the daily time frame for the ES, the NQ, the Dow, YM, and the Russell 2000. Those will be on your screen here momentarily. If you take a look at the ES Mini, the ES Mini's got a TD9 count top. That top would be negated with a close above 53.49. Looked like that might happen early this morning, but that did not. So the TD9 count top is still in place. You've got a profile that's in place with sellers residing at 53.49, and the buyers are sitting at 52.96. Price right now is tested the center of that profile, 53.17. The NQ, it's still all out bullish. The only way that the NQ gets any kind of bearish signal would be to generate some type of bullish, rever a bearish reversal candle. The candle that it could generate today, possibly, would be a bearish shooting star. If it does that, you'd have a sell the D point pattern. We're in bar number six of a TD9 count. We can see here a series of higher lows dating back for the last five trading sessions out there. So the NQ is still outright bullish, but it's going to be the end of the day that's going to help us understand what the markets are doing because the NQ and the Russell does not have a topping pattern. It's got A to B equals CD, but no bearish reversal candle. And the Russell 2000, and I'm skipping over the Dow, but we'll come back to it. The Russell 2000 just consolidating with inside its daily profile. Now it has lost momentum 
because it's trading below that oscillator and change line at 2088. So we may see the Russell 2000 get down and test support, which is 2059. If you got a close below 2059, you would have a profile change in trend, and that would suggest we had lower, and we want to take a look at the weekly charts to identify what those price targets would be. In the case of the Dow, the Dow, just like the ES Mini, retains its TD9 count top out there. That was actually never even being threatened earlier in the morning. Uh, we can see that the Dow has a profile with support at 34, 39. 424. So that's the level that you'd want to watch. If price were to close below 39,424, that would be signaling one, a profile change in trend. Number two, that price would go target its breakout level, and that would be down to the 38,584 area out there. So that's on the daily time frame. What's going on there? Let's go dive down just a bit and take a look at what's going on intraday. We'll start with the ES Mini. Yes, many on the daily, we don't have to cover anything. But on the five-hour time frame chart, and this is helpful to all of you intraday traders out there, is that you had a nice confirmed roads momentum indicator top. Got that all in one bar. While price was moving lower, it was also testing support. So the five-hour key level of support out here is at 53.25. You get a close below that. That would be at 2 o'clock because that's when this bar would uh, complete out there. That would give you a profile change in trend for that signal, and that could open up the move to 52.16. 53.25 is the level to be watching for the five-hour time frame chart. The four-hour time frame chart has got a buy zone between 53.12 and 53.20. I don't actually have a topping pattern out there, but what we do know is where support is at. So you got 53.12 on the 240, 53.25 on the five-hour. Let's make it 53.12 as the key area. The two-hour chart. 53.12 is also its level of support. That does have a road momentum indicator top. So we're using 53.12 as our support levels. Now, we get down to those real intraday charts, 10-minute, 15-minute chart. Uh, we've got a road momentum indicator bottom. You've got a key reversal pattern inside. You've got, so you might get a TD9 count bottom as well. It doesn't matter. You just need one out there. And uh, you've already got a key reversal bar in the 15-minute chart. So within the next two minutes, exactly two minutes, we're likely to get a, a, sig a buy signal there that would suggest a rally up to 53.40. Now, that 53.40 won't come to fruition until we see that 10-minute resistance level of 53.35 fail, meaning a close above that. Right now, we can see that 10-minute ES had a nice road momentum indicator bottom, but price struggling at that red oscillator and change line. Again, the number there that we would be paying attention would be 53.35. So the 10-minute says, okay, rally's over. The 15-minute, not so sure. No bottom signal yet on a 30-minute time frame chart, nor on a 60-minute time frame chart. Uh, nor on all those other ones that we looked at other than pro, uh, price getting back to support levels. Let's go take the NQ. This is going to take a few moments here for this to populate, but that's okay. We already discussed how the key level here is going to be the daily, the daily chart and whether or not it generates a bearish reversal candle at days in. That's not what we have right now. I don't have a way to forecast to say whether that's going to unfold or not, but we certainly can take a look at the intraday charts here as soon as they populate to see what they're telling you and I. On the five-hour time frame chart, it's got a roads momentum indicator top and price found support at the top of its profile. That's kind of a bullish signal out there, but it's got that top, so we're going to call it neutral. 18,794 is the key level to watch there. You've got a new profile, and if, if price closes below that, then we're likely headed down to about 18,718. That's a four hour profile. It's a new profile that's just formed out here. Two hour chart also tested the top of its profile after confirming a roads momentum indicator top, so that is a neutral signal, bullish to neutral out there. 60 minute price trying to get back inside a profile so the only bottom patterns that we've got just like the es mini come from the 10 and 15 minute time frame key level for the nq is going to be this 18 893 level steve rhodes with tfnn we'll be right back If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. 
But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at the uh, Dow Equity Future Contract, since that's really the weakest one and the one that is closest to support. I thought we would check in on that uh, before we go and take a look at some other instruments out here. So the Dow Equity Future Contract, we know it's trading with inside its daily profile. That daily profile's got support at the 39,424 level out there. So it's nearing support. Do we see any bottom patterns out there uh, to uh, speak of? Well, you've got one on the 15-minute chart, not on the 10-minute chart just yet. The 15-minute's got a TD9 count bottom. Could rally up towards the 39,586 area, but nothing on the 10, nothing on the 30, nothing on the 60, nothing on the 120. The four hour time frame chart is the only other chart pattern that I see that has a potential bottom signal. And that's a TD9 count bar that's not going to complete until 2 p.m. Remember, the low can come and the bar following bar number nine. So the four hour chart really is something that's got to be tucked away unless we get some type of major rally out there until the end of the day. So not the type of bottom signals that you'd like to see as prices moving lower, um, you know, to a support area on the daily time frame. So maybe that comes to fruition a bit later in the day out there. So hopefully that gives you a decent overview of what's going on. Um, let's move over to the uh, black background charts for a moment. And we'll do that. We'll do that momentarily. So let's. Uh, sorry about that. Um, get this window changed. So we'll take. Even though Peter uh, from Park City hasn't asked the question, I know it's got to be on his mind. So we take a look at the advanced decline oscillator. First of all, we had the advanced decline. So what's the advanced decline oscillator? It's the difference between the 39 and 19 period exponential moving average of the advanced decline line. I happen to have the advanced decline line on my screen out here. So the high of the advanced decline line took place back in November of 2021. That reading that I had on my screen was at 57.5148. Did we ever close above that, 57.5148? The answer is no, we did not. 
But price got right up to that level and turned down. Does that matter to, to tell you the truth? I don't know. What does matter is that we use that advanced decline line to create that oscillator. And the oscillator closed below zero yesterday. It's trading below zero as we speak today. We're at a minus 103 area out there. It's getting very close. It's not there yet, but it's getting very close to the oversold reading. Can you believe that? In just two days, this is maybe getting down towards its oversold reading. So we want to pay attention to that. And the oversold reading, by the way, folks, is when that gets down and closes at or near that minus 150 level. Uh, so, again, we're at minus 104. There's still room to run before it gets down there. But the, this is signaling to you and I that sellers are the ones that are in control of the market. Opposed to that is a spot volatility. The spot volatility is still below its 50-day exponential moving average. The 50-day is at 1403. Spot volatility right now close at 1211. So it is still buyers that have a bit of an edge. Now, if the spot volatility were to get up and close above 1317 today, that would change things. That would suggest, even though it's below the 50 day exponential moving average, that could suggest that we see further lows inside the SP 500. The S mini, we would watch that support level, the bottom of its profile. That's something that you and I already spoke about. I had a question that came in earlier. It's really deep in my email, so I'm going to really have to paraphrase here. But it came in from uh, uh, Lee, Lee M. And he was asking if I could create or recreate the charts that Peter Elides has, uh, has uh, I guess uh, I didn't see it, but he's done several segments with Larry out there. And the question, the specific question, so we get to that first is, is it possible that the semiconductors, today's gap to the upside, which I don't think exists any longer, or it's a very small gap, is it possible that this is the uh, major top out here inside of the semis or the NDX 100 or the market? And so apparently Peter uses a couple Couple different ratios. Well, I went online because I wasn't familiar with them. He does use one ratio that's a division between the NDX and the Dow. That's not exactly what Lee was speaking about. He was referring to the chart on the right hand side, and that's one that we're going to focus in on right now. And so there's a ratio that he uses that divides the socks by the Dow. And if he takes so, I believe that that if I understand this correctly, that ratio peaked in March of 2000. And, it, and, it, and when that uh, peaked out there, obviously, that led to a, a bear market. And what we've got going on right now is we're very close to that reading, the reading being 0.13. If we take a look at where we're at right now, it's really at 0.13. This is a weekly chart. Now, I don't know where we're going to end tomorrow. So we're right up at that level. And the question is, am I not showing that chart? Oh, I am showing that chart. Good. Okay. Um, give me a moment here. So the question is, are we at a major top? Now, there's only one data point out here, Lee. It's the one from 2000. So maybe we are, maybe we aren't, but it's hard for me to say whether that's a top or not. But what I can share with you, which we'll pull up in the next set of charts, is what was really going on, utilizing the patterns that we use here during this show, what was going on at that time? So let's go take a look at that. And there it's going to take me just a moment uh, slide. So I had because I had to go back to 2000. I needed to go ahead and just simply put this on a uh, on a PowerPoint here. So if we take a look at in 2000 when the uh, semis topped out there, we we'll take a look at the daily and the weekly and the monthly, and that's really important. Why is that really important? Because quite frankly, when major tops forms, all three of those charts will have confirmed topping patterns. Here is an example. If we take a look at the daily time frame for the semis. It was bar number nine. Uh, that uh, formed that top. That was on the trading day of March 10, 2000. You can go back and take a look at it in your charts. On the weekly time frame, it was um, March of 2000. It was uh, what was the date? Uh, I didn't. Uh, well, March 10. Uh, no, it was my. I was a daily time frame. I don't know why I didn't put in the uh, weekly. But you also see that. Uh, oh, the weekly, uh, March 21st. I just have to look below. So the week of March 21st, that confirmed a sell the D point pattern. It was that dark cloud cover candle. And on a monthly basis, it was March. Also another TD9 count pattern out there. So now what we want to do is let's go take a look and see where are we at currently inside the SOX charts. So we're going to change windows. That's not what's going to pop up immediately. But I will get to the uh, SOX out there momentarily. And we'll take a look at the daily, the weekly, and the monthly time frame to see what kind of patterns we have at the moment. So on the daily time frame, we are going to today form bar number nine of a TD9 count. What do we do in 2000? On the daily time frame, bar number nine of a TD9 count. Uh, now, this says that the high could take place uh, tomorrow, 
because it can be that high. It can be can be the day after the bar following bar number nine. So at least on the daily time frame, uh, Lee, it's got potential. Now you can see there is no there is no gap to the upside because what Lee was also asking about was a three gap play. So we can eliminate that. We don't have to worry about that on a weekly time frame. And this all is dependent upon where the Sox close tomorrow. If it closed about 52.17.83, then the patterns requiring a top on a daily, weekly, and monthly time frame will get negated for the weekly time frame. And then I'd have to answer your question and say no, because it's not following along. Now, I'm not showing you all the other charts for the Dow and how it forms tops, major tops, but trust me, you don't have to trust me. Go back and do the work yourself. Daily, weekly, and monthly, each, when we're, whenever there's a bear market, each of them have had a top. That doesn't mean when each of them have a top, it automatically leads to a bear market, but that's a pattern that's been present before every bear market. The monthly time frame, which does not end, I believe, until next Friday, so we won't know till next Friday, but if price closes about 52, 17, 83 there, the answer to your question, Lee, would be no, at least with regard to chart patterns out there. So there's potential. But the question is, where do the semis close next Friday? Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. We go take a look at, I think, uh, Light Sweet Crew with Brent in Martinez, California. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Tigers, you've seen his show, you've learned from his webinars, and now it's time to trade side-by-side -side with him. Join Larry Pesavento for the second month of his new service, Live Trading Fridays. Hosted in the Tiger's Den trading room on Discord, Larry has analyzed a number of commodities and indices, placed profitable trades, and explained his method. Whether you're new to trading or are a seasoned market veteran, trading side-by-side -side with a titan like Larry Pesavento will only enhance your game. Utilizing Fibonacci retracements and ABCD structures, Larry provides decades of insight into when to place trades, when to exit, when to ignore, and so much more. Learning is doing. So if you're serious about learning technical analysis and becoming profitable in this uncertain market, Live Trading Fridays is a must-have tool in your arsenal. Live Trading Fridays occur every second and fourth Friday of the month, so trading events for this month are May 10th and 24th. If you're serious about trading, we'll see you there. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day.
Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's go out to uh, Brent in Martinez, California. Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing this morning? Oh, I'm doing great, Steve. And you? Excellent. Thanks so much for asking. Is it Light Sweet Crude that we're going to take a look at? Yes, I'm looking at the July contract. Yes. How can and I I'm help? I'm looking at it on the daily, but I'm really just looking at going back roughly a month. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm taking that... I think it's around the 12th of April. Yes. It's the $86 high. 86.16, And then yes. I'm going down to, should be May 15th, that hammer candle. Yeah. And if you take what's in between, I mean, it's a pretty obvious AD equals CD, and I think it hit the number pretty good. Just wanted to have you take a look at that. And to me, that's a pretty good risk reward area down at where it's sitting, right, you know, because it got down to 76 something last night. But roughly in this area to, you know, and give yourself a pretty tight stop. I mean, anything below that area, I would pretty much get out. Yeah, yeah. It it does have a buy the D point pattern, and it confirmed that uh, with the uh, so the the A to B equals C D pattern. That we got. Let me finish this off right here, uh, so folks can see it. You can see that what we made was basically a little bit more than the one to one A to B equals C D pattern to the downside. Now I'm going to get rid of that pattern out there. What I also have out here, Brent, is I've got uh, if you come off of the lows on your charts from December 13th of 2023, and then you start hitting the uh, lower swing point levels, you're going to see. Uh, a, a rising trend line and if you also use that high that you were using of april 12th out there and you start hitting the other bars for a descending trend line you're going to see we're trading within a wedge now what i learned many years ago i don't know if it's true because i don't really trade this pattern that often is if you go take a look at that wedgie out there which right now is about a 12 point move it says that whichever way light speed crude breaks here you would have a 12 point move either to the upside or to the downside now, to assist you with this being a, a decent tr a potential trade to the upside, because of its by the D point pattern, because it's also testing the rising trend line as well as a profile. And profile support out here right now is at 76.98. So I would say, you know, you're going to use a tight stop if you're going to take a long position. Makes it, we'll, we'll take a look at the intraday chart, so, and just see what they say. But I wanted to be able to show the rising and falling trend line, be able to quickly identify the number of points that we'll be talking about. So, Brett, before I slide over to those white background charts, is there anything on this chart here that uh, you'd like to take a look at or have questions about? No, that was great. I appreciate you showing that, and that's something Perfect. else to be watching. And I just – also in my mind, I'm thinking, you know, we're going into this holiday weekend, and you'd think that the usage would be up somewhat, and the fact that it's down at this lower end of the range – has some potential, anyways. It does, it does. So let's go take a look at the intraday charts because we know that we're near an area of support. Certainly, it's the bottom of the daily profile, rising trend lines. We've clearly identified that price should be at support. Now, if it breaks support, where is price likely to head to? And for that, I look at the July contract on a weekly time frame, which I don't know if there's an A to B equal C. I don't think there was a top out there. We just have a consolidation with inside its profile. So here... And I don't know whether you'd use this type of wide stop if you're trading the futures contract. But here support is between 74.66 and 75.81. So if the daily pattern fails, that's the next area where price could or should find support. Let's take a look at something else. Let's look at a 30-minute time frame chart, which formed a Rhodes Mintum indicator top this morning. It did that at 10 a.m. And since then, we've seen a move lower as price tries to target its breakout level of 76.92. I don't have a bottom pattern, so to speak. I don't have a TD9 count bred for you or anything like that on the 30-minute chart. But sometimes pulling right back to the breakout level, 76.92, would be a buy. On a 60-minute time frame chart, it's got a TD9 count top, and it also has a breakout level at 76.91. So 76.91, 76.92, it sounds like a pretty decent area. And then on the 300-minute chart, you've got 76 36 out there so i know you're very patient when it comes to trading um and the question is do those breakout levels hold so you got it which they should 
because of the daily time frames, rising price channel, it's by the D point pattern and so forth. But that's what I've got for you on the intraday charts out there. So I'd say if those patterns fail, then 7466 might be the next area where you would explore for a potential uh, trade. The problem is, is that all of a sudden we could be breaking through that rising price channel and that could be a 12 point move to the downside so yeah i'm with you that you know hey we're holiday weekend maybe we get a bunch of travel i don't know the, the interesting thing is i i just don't know what it's i haven't really looked at traveling uh too much uh this time of year so i don't even know if the you know what the airfares are uh people obviously you're you're more interested in car driving so i don't know what the statistics are uh, today with regard to whether it's going to be a great uh, memorial i didn't even realize it was memorial day weekend that's how out of out of it Stevie was because I'm like, wait a minute, it's only the 20th. I thought it was the end of the month, but it just goes to show you don't 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 rely on Stevie for your holiday information out there. <laughs> well, so I, right I now definitely appreciate right? your help, if nothing else, and maybe not your travel advice, but hey, at least on the on the stock charting, I, I definitely appreciate that. Yeah, at 76.92, looks like we just hit that area, so you're going to know real soon. Um, whether or not this could be a bottom and it's a buy. And for that, you probably go to uh, – what's the shortest-term time frame chart that you would look at to consider a trade or an entry? Do you, do you go down to something real short? Um, I, I, or? I, think, uh, I, use, I use my five-minute chart a lot, honestly. You do? Okay. Yeah. Um, so let's uh, let's just do here real quick. I'm going to take the 30 minute. We're going to turn it into a five minute. We're not going to worry about the oscillator and change line because that's still going to be on the 30 minute basis out there. But let's get this here. So what does the five minute time frame chart show us? It's it's got like 30 days worth of data because it was a 30 minute chart out there. So it's going to take just a moment. Um, but one of the things, so on a five minute chart, and share, I'm, I know people would really be interested. What is it on a five minute chart that you would be looking for for some type of confirmation? I do the TD counts. I do um, some of Basil's work. I do. It just depends. I mean, right now we're starting to get kind of a bullish engulfing yes. candle. It just has to finish off. Yeah? Yes, yes. Yeah, so, uh, look, I don't, I don't have – it looks to me like there could be an A to B equal CD pattern to the downside. Uh, you're in bar number seven for your TD9 counts out there. You're in letter number F is what it looks uh, – yeah, letter number F, so don't wave number six on the Chapman wave. Here's what I can share with you is on a five-minute time frame, your resistance level is 77.42. And if price get above 77.42, then it should make a move to 77.98 or 78.14 out there. So um, that's what the five-minute chart here shows. We're just about to go to a, a hard break out there. Brent, is there anything else that I can share with you? No, I think that's that was really great, Steve. I appreciate it. You know, as always, you throw in a little extra nugget in there every time I, I call in something Perfect. that I didn't think about. So I appreciate that. Uh, that sounds great. Hey, Brett, always good to hear from you, and have a happy holiday weekend. If we don't talk to you uh, tomorrow, and then uh, do the same, uh, Steve. You bet. Take care. You bet. You bet. Brent in Martinez, California. Folks, we come back from this breakout here. I want to just review some of the requests that came in that I tried to run through in two minutes yesterday, and then we'll pick up a couple of new ones. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Keckstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A 
former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member. Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Dow is down 268, S&P's up 12, NASDAQ 100 up 134, semis up 69. And I apologize, I don't remember where we left off yesterday exactly, and I didn't take really good notes. Uh, but I know that I had a list on my screen of a number of instruments, so I'm just going to run through these real quick because I think I did it during the last two minutes of the show. The first one was for Fuel Cell, FCEL. This is for Dan inside the Tiger's Den. He's looking for a long-term play. And so, Dan, if I didn't say it, on the monthly and the weekly chart, I don't have any kind of a bottom signal. We're trading below profile support out there, so they're not exactly buying into the idea that we've got a long-term bottom just yet. But the daily does have that Roadsman indicator signal with price consolidation with inside its daily profile and if you do get two consecutive close above 94 cents that would at least suggest that maybe we're going to get an a to b equal cd pattern on the upside or a move up to about the buck 16 level so that's on fuel cell there was a request by g-man to take a look at amazon How's Amazon trading this morning? Well, it uh, is going to go ahead and complete that TD9 count bottom on the daily time frame. I believe we spoke about that yesterday. It has resistance at 185.40 and 185.93-ish. If price can clear the 185.93-ish, and we should see a move up to 188.43 and 188.89. That's coming from the daily time frame chart. The weekly does have a Roadsman indicator top. That was confirmed last week. Uh, this week, though, price has held support, which is the top of its profile, 182.45. As long as price remains above 182.45, the weekly signal switches to neutral. And on a monthly time frame chart for Amazon, other than testing a prior swing point, but let me open up this chart here. Other than testing a prior swing point, it's a significant swing point. It's one from July of 2021 out there at 188.65. Would you take a long position knowing that that is a key level of resistance you're trading at 183.76? I, I wouldn't do that. I'm not saying that that's what G-Man is doing. I'm just saying I wouldn't take a – I don't want anybody to read into what I'm saying and somehow take a long position when on a monthly basis you're right up against that resistance level. If you do clear and close above next Friday, 188.65, that's going to be a bullish signal out there. There's no other topping pattern that we have on the current leg to the upside. But again, what is it going against on that uh, left-hand side of the chart? Uh, 83 million shares the month of July of 2021. Last month, we came up into it with 917 million. Holy shnikes. This month, we're at 691. 691 million shares going against 83 million shares? Wow. So it's really going to go test that high if it hasn't already. Has it done that yet? Yeah, it has. It's test that high. 
But you're coming this month. Even if you reject it this month, you should get back up there next month to at least test it. But maybe it's going to bust through that level. So that's why I'd be watching uh, on Amazon is really that all-time high to see if it's no longer the all-time high, at least intraday-wise. But that's got that, that key level and that key top out there. Also, there was a request to take a look at AMD. So how is this responding after NVIDIA's news out there? It still is just consolidating with inside its daily profile. And that's between the range of 161.34 at support and 169.72 as resistance. I don't see any kind of a topping pattern as we speak. So you just got a consolidation on the daily. The weekly, you've got a consolidation with inside this profile. It's a brand new profile, by the way, that is formed out there, or I believe it is. Let me just check and make sure. 173.42 is the top. Yeah, that's a new profile. Now, that's also where the oscillator and change line is at. So that's really at 174.22. So in order for AMD to get its bullish mode out there, you need to see it close by that 174 level that we have out there. So right now, just a daily consolidation, weekly up against the level of resistance out there. And the uh, monthly looks uh, pretty uh, well. The monthly had that Rhodesman to mitigator top. And it's now neutral signal because price has tested and rejected that green oscillator and change line. And then finally, there was NVIDIA. Mr. Bill had been asking about that. So what does NVIDIA got out here? Well, as we talked about yesterday, uh, there was a possibility that NVIDIA could form a TD9 count top. It would do that between today and Monday. Today is going to be bar number eight of a TD9 count pattern. Do I think today is the day for the top? No, I don't. <laughs> Why does Stevie say that? Now, we're not even looking at intraday charts out there. The reason I say that is we have a wide-ranging bar. This gap to the upside, that is a wide, if you just fill in the gap, it is a wide-ranging bar. You've got, I think you've got pretty good volume behind the move. So far, you've got uh, three, 34 million shares. That's taking out its prior high out here. That was a key level from back in March. That had 114 million shares. What did I say we're at so far today? 34 million shares in two hours. So it's going to be doing... Um, similar type volume, but nonetheless, it's blowing away that swing point. There's no topping signal that I see on the weekly time frame chart or the monthly time frame chart. So maybe it's it's going to form a TD9 count top, unless it just totally dives tomorrow out there. But I just don't see that in the cards here for Nvidia. So no top yet inside Nvidia, but it could take place between today and next Monday. Uh, Joey D or Joe D wanted to take a look at uh, keys out here. K E Y S. So keys. Um, what are we doing right now? So on the daily time frame, Keys is trading below the bottom of its daily profile. It's been below it now for two consecutive sessions. Today would be session number three. So now we switch over to the longer term time frame charts. What I see out here is really just a consolidation. So if we draw in that consolidating pattern out here, we'll get my consolidation tool. It's called a rectangle. You got to love it. Um, uh, you don't have to love it, but Stevie loves it. I have a strange sense of humor. So sorry about that. You got to you have to put up with it. So now where's that consolidation? I'd say it's probably about right here. I just need to move this chart over just a tad. So what I really see is more of on a weekly time frame, more of a consolidation than anything else out here, you know, right around that range. So as long as it holds this consolidation, the consolidation, you know, you can't bust them to the downside, you try to bust them to the upside. Now on a weekly basis so far, you've got volume for the first uh, nearly uh, three and a half days or so, eight million shares. Last time price was down here was with five million shares. It was down here with uh, another five million shares. So you're pushing lower with volume. The question is, and then you were really down here on this candle with 9 million shares. So you're definitely pushing lower, but you're still inside that consolidation pattern that I see out here, Joe. Uh, let's see what the uh, monthly time frame chart. The monthly time frame chart shows us shows us that the uh, oscillator and change on has been a real key level of resistance. So on a monthly time frame, if you ever see keys close above this oscillator and change line, it's currently printed 156.31. That's going to tell you about a significant change in trend from a monthly standpoint out there. It's been below the oscillator and change line ever since November of 2022 out there. That's a long time. But if that's, uh, so that's what I see when we take a look at keys. I hope that helps you out. Mohammed wanted to take a look at CMG. So I've got to punch that symbol in here right now because I didn't have a uh, spot for it. So we'll take a look at what uh, Chipotle, I believe that's CMG, if I'm not mistaken, what it's doing. And right now it's testing profile support. So 
This has a Roachman Dimindicator top. Mohammed, that pattern went ahead and confirmed on May the 13th. You had a new profile that formed that day as well. It was a bullish structured profile. The buy zone is between 3146 and 3175. Yesterday it hit that buy zone. Today it's hit that buy zone. Right now it shows as a hammer candle. I doubt that that's what holds up through the end of the day out there. So the consolidation is held, support is held. The daily time frame chart goes to neutral. The weekly time frame chart, I don't see any kind of bearish signal there, nor do I on the monthly time frame, although you're on wave number C, but that doesn't get confirmed until a lower high. And that would be not until the earliest would be until the end of June out there. So I got a daily consolidation. I think you just wanted me to take a look at it. My thoughts are as long as that holds, we should see Chipotle run up to the 32, 31 level. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We get back to this break. We're going to take a look at URNJ for G-Man inside the Tiger's Den. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a ticker symbol, URNJ. It is uh, closed below the bottom of its profile yesterday. It's trading below its green oscillator and change line today and bottom of its profile. It's a suggestion that it wants to move lower. But, gee, man, it's not going to move lower until price takes off that weekly oscillator and change line, which is currently printed at 28.17 out there. And again, we're at 28.75. So I would say if price closes below 28.17, we're likely headed to 27.17, a dollar move there, or maybe 25.8. 81. Do I see a weekly top out here? I'd have to go back and really see if there's any 
A to B equals CD patterns to the upside. And we really need to see what the candle is come tomorrow. So maybe we can relook at this tomorrow for you and see what it's doing on the uh, weekly time frame. Uh, but it does look like it wants some lower price. But watch that 2817 level uh, because that will are, are right around 2817. That number is going to change a bit as price moves up or down. So hope that helps you out. Uh, we had a request to take David H. His question is on ELM. What's the upside target by the end of next week out here? Well, I would have to say as long as price closes tomorrow above 185.17, the upside target could be around 205.03. It should trade higher. I don't know if it will get to that level by next Friday or not, uh, but it should head higher. The weekly chart, that's that green oscillator and change line. So closing above that would be a signal that you have a rising price oscillator above zero, and that's bullish period. That's what you've got inside the monthly time frame. That resistance level is 208.49 and 206.03. So those would be your price targets to the upside. The last question coming in is, is it possible that gold is putting in a short-term bottom? Well, I'll say it's more than that. It could be putting in more than a short-term bottom. Wait a minute, Stevie, how'd you come up with that? The uh, five-hour time frame chart, bar number nine of a TD9 count at breakout support of 2342. This bar here completes at 2 p.m. We are in the bar following bar number nine on the 240-minute time frame chart. This completes at 2 p.m. as well. That's a bottom signal. The two-hour time frame chart, the bar following bar number nine, this completes in another four minutes out there. That's a bottom signal. 60-minute needs a bullish reversal candle. You've already got that on the 30-minute time frame, so that's Rhodes Mintum Indicator bottom. So what I'd watch here, Z, is uh, 23.51. The price can go above that. We should rally up towards the 23.62-ish area out there. Folks, stay tuned for all the great programming. Thanks for joining me on Terrific Thursday. I'll look forward to seeing you on Fabulous Friday. Take care. Have a great day.